and is home to two very large sinkholes and one that has at least double since it first arrived in the 90s. The smaller one, this is the, uh, the initial sinkhole that in the 80s. Uh, this one here is the most recent one in the 90s. Back then, you know, like I said, we could uh, throw a rock across it and be on the other side. But now it's it's so big and we can't hit a golf ball uh, across it. So it's primarily really big. Mitchell fears these sinkholes may just be the beginning. And he's expecting more to pop up around the area with all the recent activity. Reporting live in the studio, Haley Brooks, Local 2 News. Hey YouTubers, uh, that was a clip of some sinkholes in the state of Texas. Uh, <clears throat> I find that very startling that we are, uh, this is caused from probably from fracking of oil. And uh, oil is such a primitive uh, source of fuel. I mean, why are we still on the oil? We're destroying our own habitat by drilling into our own planet. Uh, our Earth is very much alive, just as much as we are, and we're over here poking holes in her. I mean, how would you feel if somebody came along and poked holes in you and sucked your life force out of you? I find it very, very disturbing, and uh, I think it's wrong. And I mean, we, we have the capabilities of building vehicles with uh, batteries, rechargeable batteries uh, as power supplies and uh, DC motors and maybe maybe some solar panels on the top. I mean, really, as a civilization, we need to uh, advance just a little bit better than what we're doing. So I know we've got Tesla vehicles and different kinds of uh, electric vehicles, but we're just not quite there yet, and we should have been there like yesterday. All right, so let's move on. Uh, just had a rant a little bit there, but uh, this is a circuit. It's the same circuit I've been showing for, the, if you haven't noticed, for the last few videos, and there's a reason for this. Um, I've been doing this for well over 20 years and I find that this circuit has everything that is needed to show uh, excess energy in a collapsing magnetic field. Um, a lot of the times, for for those of us who have been pulsing coils for, for years on end and then catching the resulting collapsing field with diodes in a, into a capacitor or into a load or whatever. The thing about diodes is uh, it's very difficult to see the excess energy in a collapsing magnetic field, so it's very easy for one to say, hey, you know, collapsing magnetic fields are, are never ever going to be over 100% efficiency electrically. Uh, they might uh, say, they'll probably most of the time just end up with like an 84 percent electrical efficiency and <clears throat> and the diodes is what's killing the small little excess energy to where you can't see it uh, if you've been playing around with electronics long enough you'll you'll understand that there's a voltage drop across a diode and some resistance and so there's a slight power loss through a diode and it's that slight power uh, power loss that we need to see in order to see something above 100%. Okay, so this is going to be a comparison between a direct connection from our uh, battery or power supply into our load right here. Um, and comparing that to Tesla's impulse DC technology and so let's do that right now right now here let me get a zoomed out view here of everything and later on also uh, I'll show the schematic and uh, have a little bit of a better explanation for uh, what is going on in this seemingly simple circuit and so here's the power supply running our switching uh, work uh, we are not concerned with that because that's just the power needed to do our uh, high frequency switching what we are concerned with is 
and what we're looking at is the power from our battery being pulsed into our load that's what we're looking at all right so now right now uh, we got a direct connection I've added a few more components uh, since last time uh, they're not major changes but we got a capacitor on the input and that white wire right there is a switch so we can disconnect the battery and let the energy in the capacitor run into uh, through our switching circuit and into our load and that's what our comparison is going to be so right now if we follow that black wire it's connected through that white wire to the it's in parallel with the battery uh, and if we follow that black wire around it's going immediately into our meter measuring input current right now it's off uh, and then that red probe right there is going directly into that green wire which is going directly into our load which is in parallel with the capacitor there's the load it's in parallel with our capacitor uh, on those yellow wires and then of course we got our meter reading current going directly into the load with that yellow wire right there so let, let me turn that on right quick and so right now this is just a 100% transfer of energy not electrical efficiency just a 100% transfer efficiency so whatever is leaving the battery is going directly into our load at uh, an exact 100% transfer of energy and as you can see the currents are exactly the same of course because it's the same current coming out of the battery and as what's going into our load of course and the voltages are exactly the same as well so this is a 100% transfer of efficiency now uh, we're gonna disconnect our battery and let the input become the capacitor uh, the energy coming from the capacitor so let's do that and when we do that we're gonna observe what is happening to our volts in our capacitors so both capacitors will drain into our load and that's what we'll be seeing so let's do that right now so we'll just disconnect it from the battery so now look they are both draining at the exact same time at the exact same rate current we're not so uh, concerned with right now the current is lower because uh, this capacitor is compensating uh, the energy into our load and uh, it's kind of pushing our input current back but that doesn't matter what matters is this energy and both capacitors draining into the same load okay and as you can see it's the same so this is a uh, the energy in both the input and output capacitors so let's connect this back up and recharge our uh, capacitor here on the input and that's just the current charging back into the input now the thing about this is you're not going to see like you're not going to be able to see a capacitor discharging its energy and uh, getting more energy into the output capacitor because it just doesn't work like that the current has to be constant okay so this is why we have to when we go run it when we replace our battery with our capacitor then what we're seeing is what is what 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 the battery was doing immediate immediately prior to disconnecting it and letting it run from the capacitor so now let's use uh, Tesla's uh, DC impulse technology and we'll turn that on over here so and that's just the charging of the capacitor and like I said charging and discharging leads to nowhere 
okay but if it's constant like this then you'll see now the current of course again are the same but now look at our output voltage it is much higher okay so the watts is going into our load is higher than our input watts now let's disconnect our capacitor again I mean our battery and let it run and, uh, and what again what this shows is both capacitors are now draining into our load so this capacitor and this capacitor are draining both into our load and as you can see the output energy in our output capacitor always remains higher so this is just to show uh, the energy or what was going on just before connecting it from the battery and what the battery was doing and uh, the watts that was happening just before we disconnected the battery and as you can see it's got the exact same rate pretty much uh, the currents again are pretty much exactly the same it's draining and so the voltage across this capacitor is always higher therefore the watts in our load is always higher uh, so the diodes take away our uh, energy and the, as you notice there is no diode uh, coming off of our coil over here and so and so the 100% energy here let me uh, connect this back up so the load is taking 100% of the energy from our battery and then the coil is returning just a little bit more onto our load and having no diodes allows us to see this. Uh, now, a, a word on collapsing fields. For those of us who have been uh, experimenting with uh, pulsing coils and uh, catching the resulting collapsing field with a diode and e either charging a battery or a capacitor or just directly running some kind of load, most of the time will always be like 84% electrical efficiency or so um, but uh, we would like to consider the output the collapsing magnetic field as an output but why why are we doing that when the collapsing field is just the energy that came from the power supply which in this case is a battery it's just the energy that's going in and temporarily being stored in the magnetic field and then coming back out so I believe we should be considering that output from our coil from the inductive discharge or the collapsing field as just really just input so we're losing energy through the resistance of the coil onto our load okay and so we'll never see anything more than a hundred percent you're better off directly connecting the load to the battery and getting the input directly at least then we have a 100% transfer of uh, energy but knowing that the input is like 100% of the energy being transferred into our load and then our coil is also giving back a little bit of energy then we have to ask where exactly is this little bit of excess energy coming from uh, so there's more coming out than what's going in so let's move on to the schematic now and so we can explain this a little bit better uh, let's do that right now okay so here's the schematic um, everything uh, pretty much remains the same except that I changed out the uh, uh, the C1 capacitor right here um, from a 0 0.01 microfarad film capacitor to a 0 0.02 microfarad capacitor and the only thing else we've added is the capacitor in parallel with the battery right here uh, with a switch 
So we can disconnect the battery and then let letting the capacitor power uh, the circuit. Um, the, the point of the capacitors C3 and C4 is to show the energy levels on our input and our output just before we disconnect it from the battery to show what the battery and the constant current coming from the battery was doing with the energy levels here on our output and input. Uh, the output C3 of course is uh, having more uh, it has a higher voltage therefore there are more joules uh, of energy you know energy in the form of joules uh, powering our R5 load resistor with more uh, more wattage than the input uh, but since we disconnect at the switch here our battery and basically connect into our circuit this capacitor then both capacitors drain into our load so the negative is, of course is going into our load here like that and starting from this negative of this capacitor is also going into our load like this there's also a meter right here that I inserted to show current coming from our power supply or capacitor into the R5 load. So this is why uh, the meters are showing the same current because it's in the same path of the current. But this meter is showing the current directly after our power supply negative and this meter is showing the current uh, directly before our load resistor. So this is a, a conventional way of uh, reading power coming out of our power supply and going into our load, of course. Uh, but the load is showing uh, more. What's happening is that the load is not only getting our 100% transfer of energy from our power supply, okay, but the collapsing magnetic field is adding its own little bit of energy as well so uh, the output of our R5 load resistor has more uh, watts than what is being supplied by the uh, input alone from our power supply um, <clears throat> notice there is no diode okay so the switching is fast enough on our MOSFET to uh, let the collapsing magnetic field go ahead and power our resistor but it's not going to go backwards because well it's off and disconnected so it's acting sort of like a diode uh, the MOSFET is a very good switch in that it, uh, it acts more like a Tesla spark gap uh, it cuts the current off very well and then the resulting collapsing magnetic field from the coil is collected in the uh, capacitor and uh, output load of our R5 resistor which is in parallel with the voltage across our capacitor to show the true voltage uh, in our load uh, which is consequently receiving more joules of energy than what's coming out of our input. Um, so this is a good way I believe that if you don't have an oscilloscope you can uh, look at our energy levels by looking at the energy levels in our capacitors. But by all means use oscilloscopes if you do choose to replicate this which I do strongly suggest and would like you to replicate um, I would like you to replicate this um, and, and then post back your results uh, I would like to have more people doing this than just me uh, to help show exactly and more accurate, accurately uh, what's going on I do believe the meters are reading pretty accurately but most of all the capacitors are showing us the energy levels of our input and output just prior 
before the battery disconnection. So, uh, that's it for now, and uh, please replicate this. And um, also, uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, and uh, please like and share, as usual. And uh, that's it for now, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one.